Michael Jackson's Thriller Album. Stories in the Room. This is Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. Join film composer Anthony Marinelli, who programmed synthesizers for seven songs on Thriller, and a and veteran film producer Stephen Ray, who assisted Quincy Jones and was in the studio every day with Quincy and Michael. Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. I'm Anthony Marinelli with my longtime close friend and co-host, Stephen Ray, bringing you the real stories directly from the talented people in the room with us during the making of Thriller, the greatest selling album of all time. What do you think there's a difference recording back then to now? Like you do dates now. What what are the differences that you know? uh, Well, I mean, yeah, dumb question. Well, it doesn't happen that much, you know, Um, and there, there are tiny glimpses of, of how it used to be, but you have to remember, and you know this, Tony. It's, it's like it was a perfect storm, um, uh, it's perfect alchemy, you know, of uh, the best musicians working in the best studios with the best engineers, with the best producers, with the best artists working on the best songs <laughs> <That's just laughs> daily. Daily. So that's what's, what it was. But what, what's so hard about that happening now, from your point of view? Uh, the lack of songs. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> guess that's where it starts. Then. First of all, first of all, first of all, and uh, you know, uh, the, the you know, I mean, you know that the 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 the, the whole process of uh, creating music is completely different. You know. Uh, as evidenced by what's behind you and what's what's over here. I mean, look, I, you know, everybody has a home studio, you know, and you know, you can whip out your laptop, you know, as Quincy says, from bebop to hip hop to laptop. <laughs> you know, oh. you can, you can, you know what I mean? You can do it an entire production on your laptop, man. Plugins, all this kind of stuff. So the the attention. Uh, and the focus is not the same at all. I mean, you know, you don't have the, uh, the, sadly, the necessity of going to a specific room. We have an engineer, uh, a dedicated engineer, um, taking his time processing the sounds of every instrument. That's why Bruce was so uh, integral to the to the uh, process. When we interviewed Steve Percaro, he would say that he would say, "Hey." Hey Bruce, give me a little love. Can you help me out? Like he would, he said we relied on the engineers, you know, to and it was like yeah. collaboration to make Go you to sound hands, better. What, exactly, exactly. And then you exactly. play differently when you hear the sound. You know, you you play differently. It affects you. you know? So it everything, you. Yeah. it everything is affected uh, by everything else. All the all the components, all the elements combined. You know. Uh, make for that uh, type of creation. And it's not the same now, because uh, in addition to, uh, in, in other words, not only is music created different, it's consumed different. Yeah. Yes. Right now, it's, it's barely background noise, you know? I mean, you can play a whole album on this. Right. You know? This is an album now, you know? And you don't have, you know, you don't go through the same experience of getting in your car, driving the Tower Records, look shuffling through the bins, getting what you want, discovering other things that you didn't know about, oh, paying yeah. for it, taking it home, uh, putting it on the record play on your stereo system, uh, having some assistance uh, or not while listening to it, and sitting back and listening to it. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, dedicating the time to listen to it, not just because you're on the toilet. I mean, but really dedicating the time. Yeah. I mean, right. one of the other things. So it's, a, it's a, uh, Yeah, the other thing we, we talked about, yeah, yeah, back to focus, is that when you have that kind of support in the room uh, with Bruce and, you know, Bruce Swedeen and Matt Forger and, you know, you, you as a musician, you can just focus on what you need to do. Without having you to, have exactly without having to turn and go to a, exactly. go to the computer oh without having gosh. to go back and forth and it's almost like it's AG ADHD now, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a good yeah. point. Good, great point. 
You're doing you too, many jo- too many jobs. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. value like just the simple process of having free mind. It doesn't value that. And you need a free mind right. to discover. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And that's why for years, man, decades, I was adamantly against having a home studio or learning, you know, uh, uh, DAWs, you know. I didn't do it. And I finally got into logic, you know, uh, last year. And it's been, uh, it's been wonderful. But still, you know. Well, you know, my rule, I do no MIDI. That's, I stick with that. Yeah. I, I, oh, really? I, yeah, I, I kind of, I spent t- a lot of time with Oscar Peterson in the summers in Vermont oh when we, at the Sinclair. Um, they used to have this summer um, seminar thing, and That's it was amazing, amazing the yeah. people that would show up and hang out. Yeah, and Oscar was really into the Sinclair, you know. So I got to go into his hotel yeah. room, and, but but his whole thing was like he would just say, "Just play it, just play it," and it stuck with me. It's like you know what? There's something like that comes out of the keyboards, then they're just instruments like that your soul can come through just like a piano or anything else. That's why he didn't hate synthesizers, but he hated sequencing. He did, right. he didn't like it, but he would just sit there like, this is a quick aside, but he would say, okay, here's Stella by Starlight. And he plays it like all real fast into the sequencer and goes, I only use the sequencer for practice. And then he would like <laughs> transpose it. All He would play a solo through all 12 keys of the whole song arrangement okay, that yeah. he just put in there with all his substitute chords and stuff. And it's like, then he looks at me and goes, give it a try. <laughs> and I'm just like, ha ha. <laughs> then he's just laughing. <laughs> Sense of humor. But like, wow. he was wow. basically, I, wow. I, that stuck with me along with some other experiences about not getting hung up on. And that's with the problem with Dawes and, and composing using MIDI yep. and getting everything to just play like, you know, the same. Like repeatability is kind of overrated. Like I think like non-repeatable events, randomness is not is not rated high enough. Where you have differences that make the nuances are everything in in the feel. Like Absolutely. I noticed your Absolutely. bass lines on Thriller. You use a lot of articulation when you play a very inanimate keyboard, like an ARP twenty six hundred. Right. I've analyzed what you've played, like on Thriller, for instance. Uh-oh. And you really use short notes and you hit like a low note, like da 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 bop. You bop you bop like low notes really short. And if you don't listen yeah. closely, you yeah. don't even hear it. But it's that's but like you feel it. articulation. <laughs> you, feel it. you can't sequence yeah. that. I can't sequence that. No, no. And that, I Quincy would always say, you know, what you don't hear, you feel. And if you're feeling it, then you go to Tower Records and buy it. You know, his whole thing, his whole thing <laughs> yeah, was, right. you know, his whole thing was, you know, you, you if you affect someone's central nervous system, then you you got them, you got them, you, you, you mm-hmm. really you really have engaged. And Greg, you did that over and over and over and over and over again, and it's and it's something similar. I, I want to make this point is that when Anthony and I were writing the theme mm-hmm. for this for for our show here, Anthony didn't sequence anything. I was like. Man, you go go play that shit. You know, I mean, sorry, <laughs> but you know, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. you know, yeah. and he had an engineer, so we had the support there. We had Ben, the engineer there, and yeah. so we can just move and groove. Yeah. Join us for the next episode of Michael Jackson's Thriller album, Stories in the Room, with your hosts Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Watch our extended interviews on youtube.com forward slash at stories in the room. Audio only interviews are available on all podcast networks. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at stories in the room. For the latest news and links, visit the website storiesintheroom.com. This podcast is produced by Christian D. Brune and David Wolf, recorded by Autovita Studios. Additional recording by Ben Rackless. Edited by Jay Spang and Sean Hedinger. Music by Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Michael Jackson's Thriller.